These eight habits will absolutely ruin your win rate and keep you hard stuck if you do not remove them. And some of these are things that you're doing even before you enter in the game. Now check me out when I'm streaming Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 6 p.m. CST. And if you want private coaching, links will be in the description down below. Now the first tip is gonna be one that might be a bit controversial, but it's important and it's to cut out that toxic duo, at least playing with them on your main. Now I understand that a lot of you are playing with buddies that you know in real life, and that's all well and good, but especially if you're getting past the point where you're playing Overwatch just casually, and you wanna take it seriously, but you have those players that you play with that are either really toxic, always bring you down, maybe insult your gameplay, or they just don't care about improvement. Well, I definitely think you can play with these players in quick play or maybe on an alt account. If you're really trying to climb your main, don't play with these players when you're trying your best. It's not only going to stain the experience for you, but it could be the biggest reason why you're not climbing because half of your partnership is not really putting in the same effort that you are. And uh, yeah, it's going to just give you a really bad experience over time. And the last thing that you want to do is start to resent your friend because you're trying and they're not or you're improving and they're not. Definitely better ways to go about it where you could still play with your friend on the side and then grind your main. And if you're looking for a competitive duo partner, go check out the Discord. Links will be in the description down below. Now, the next big mistake that you're making is playing way past your prime. And no, I'm not talking about 27 years old. I'm talking about your prime peak play. And this is typically where you're really tired or you're hungry or you've been playing far past the point where you can mentally super focus in on the game. Oftentimes, after you have played substantial amounts, it's time to take a little bit of a break. Take yourself a refresh. Don't keep grinding. And the biggest reason that this happens is because you're sitting at six wins. You want that reset. And what do you do? You play again, you lose. And now you're a little tilted and you're more tired. So you play again and guess what? You lose again. And uh, eventually, you're going to be the one or the reason that you're losing because you're so tired. You're getting more tilted and you should have stopped freaking five games ago. Don't let it happen to you. It's it's okay to end on six wins just wake up fresh the next morning and win that seventh win baby it's not a big deal and uh yeah it's gonna make your experience a lot better next up we do gotta talk about comparing your stats in game and this comes from a lot of different areas you're either comparing your stats to your teammates the opponent's team comparing your team stats to the opponent's team stats or you're just randomly talking about your damage or heal per 10. And I want to make this clear, stats do not matter. Some characters will have a lot of damage, some characters will play in a way that doesn't get them a lot of damage or a lot of healing, but still gives them a lot of impact. And that's the problem, stats don't actually reflect impact, and what actually matters is winning. And I feel like I've been saying this a lot, but you would be surprised how many people come to me and say, I can't believe I'm losing, I do X damage for 10, or I do X heals for 10, and I still lose. I'm telling you, it does not matter. And you're only tilting yourself, setting yourself up for failure, and perpetuating wrongful ideas about the game if you continue to believe it does. Next up, we gotta talk about giving up, period. It's super, super easy to give up on a game and just stop trying. But you know what's also pretty easy? Making a comeback. Sometimes a team will be losing, losing, losing because of momentum. Maybe they lost that first fight and then they lost because of an ultimate. Or maybe in the first or second fight, the enemy team was playing a counter of theirs. But then with one swap, one single swap or one single communication or one single play style change, all of a sudden, a game that you were getting stomped in, lost, the push was all the way to your spawn, you turn it around. It's happened to you. It's happened to everyone. We've had these games where we turned it around. So why do we give up so easily? Why does our mental fall short when things start going wrong? And I'll tell you what, I recently VOD reviewed one of the best players I VOD reviewed. An insanely good player, understood the game, had great mechanical skill, but the second the opponent went something that they've lost to a lot in the past, or the second they've lost a team fight, their mental was shot. They were gone. This is what always happens. We always lose. This is why I can't ever win. This is the type of things they were saying. And the thing is, if they just had their mental on point, I knew for a fact they would be in a much higher rank. But this is so important to get right because if you let your mental go, then you're giving up so many wins that you need to power through. You need to have the iron hard mental because at the end of the day, comp is not just a battle of skill, it's a battle of mental. And if you give up when the opponents aren't, they're gonna win games that you will not. 
Next up, we gotta talk about trying to ego the enemy for no reason. A lot of people wanna turn this into a 1v1, and if you die to an enemy DPS, or you get killed as a Lucio by the other enemy Lucio, everyone wants to get revenge, right? You wanna get revenge on your enemy, and I understand that you wanna prove that you're better, or you wanna diff the enemy team, but, uh, there are many times where the enemy tries to coax you in, tries to get you into that 1v1 mentality, and then you waste your entire time doing something that isn't actually contributing to the win, and then you're left feeling kind of silly when the enemy actually beats you, and uh, they're going to talk trash, and there's nothing you can do about it. The best revenge is winning the damn game. If they want to go and just have these weird duels and weird 1v1s or whatever the case may be, just steal their elo and force them to play the game like a real human being. Now, the next thing that we need to talk about and something that just completely destroys players' win rates at every rank is holding on to their ultimate when they intend to swap. You're getting countered really hard and you just aren't comfortable with what you're on. So you hold on to your ultimate and you're like, hey, I almost have ultimate or I have ultimate. I want to get some use out of it. The enemy team invests ult. You don't use your ult. You don't get an opportunity and then you die. And then guess what? You're walking out of spawn again as the same character. And maybe you don't find a great scenario again so you die and then you go back out on the same character and when you finally get it off guess what it didn't even win the team fight and then you finally swap but what was that three fights later and one ult later now i'm not saying to always swap if you have a really impactful ultimate well what i am saying is it has to make sense the ultimate has to have a chance to actually sway the team fight you need to have a good understanding of what ultimates your team has versus the enemy how important is it that you try to win the next team fight or do you have another time before they reach the next objective and then lastly how hard are you getting countered how little impact are you going to be getting are you going out using your ultimate and then you're just going to get shut down or can you utilize the momentum to win several team fights in a row these are the questions you have to ask yourself and most of the time the correct answer is just going to be to swap so stop overvaluing saving your ultimate take that 30 percent and go out on the character that you actually feel confident in playing Next up, we got to talk about running away instead of dying on the payload. This is a really, really big one where players often want to run instead of die. And this is bad when the cart moves. And instead of you dying and resetting with your team, you don't die until far later, stagger, and then you don't regroup with your team until the fight is already happened, the objective is already taken. It's a really, really bad habit, but it's really common because players always want to do more live fight duel when a lot of the time you're supposed to die and it's really unintuitive but it's the right play now last but certainly not least this is about touching an objective when it's about to be capped and what your job is so sometimes it's your job to swap to touch and sometimes it's not so let's say the cart is about to capture the third point right on king's row if you're on defense and no one can realistically touch and hold the cart, you need to swap to something that can get out quickly, touch the cart, and stall it. Something like a Lucio, maybe even a Winston. Something that can stall on the cart, and your job is just to purely prevent the enemy from capping. But you need to see if that's your responsibility, because sometimes you need to even give up your ultimate to go do it, because you're the only one who can. Now on the flip side, Sometimes you have to play for your teammates being able to touch and you being able to get impactful picks to carry the fight. So as an example, sometimes it's proper to walk out as Widow because you have characters that can stall the point and as Widow, you have a chance to get pickoffs on the enemy backline, turn the fight and maybe even win the fight. And it's really up to you to decide what is your job? Do you have to actually touch cart, contest cart? Or can you play something that actually gives you a chance at swapping the team fight? Evaluating this, thinking about this critically is super important and most people don't really think about this enough. Anyways, if you have any big habits that ruin your win rate that you want to share with everyone else definitely let me know down below follow my twitch stream in the comments down below monday wednesday friday 6 p.m cst subscribe to the channel and i'll see you next time